this video is a great introduction to sets. So before we start working with sets, it may be helpful or important to understand exactly what a set is. So a set is essentially an unordered collection of objects. Unordered collection of objects. So for instance, I have three brothers, and so I would write in no particular order my brother's names. So this would be the set of brothers. And notice I've used the set notation, which is that bracket, which I don't do very well when I'm in a hurry, but that is what I'm talking about. Um, elements would be the objects in the set. So you might hear the word elements as in elements of a set, or you might hear someone say Adam is a member of the set of brothers, or Kevin is a member of the set of brothers. So objects are elements, but we might also call them members. And again, I wanted to make sure we talked about the notation. This notation essentially means that, let's say if I said um, Adam, just like this, this would mean Adam is an element in set B or Adam is contained within set B. And of course that means if I said um, Larry is not in set B, which means Larry is not contained or is not an element in, is not contained in set B. So that's some of the notation that you will see. There are several sets that you should know already, having been through, I'm sure, several math classes. Um, but we're just going to make sure that we all know all of these sets because you will see them over and over and over. This one is the natural numbers. And the natural numbers are essentially just the, um, the counting numbers and zero. So we would say it would be the set that contains 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., etc., on to infinity. Then we have z. z is the integers, which is, of course, positive and negative um, natural numbers. So obviously, there is no negative 0 but I would have negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and on and on in each direction. Uh, keep in mind that you might end up with something like z plus or z minus. This would be the positive integers, whereas you know, if I made it z negative, that would be the negative integers. And the same would hold true for the rationals or reals, etc. So q represents rationals, all of the rational numbers. And remember, rationals are any values that can be written um, as a ratio of two integers, essentially. And then we have R. R is the set of real numbers. And C, which is the set of complex numbers. And really, there's just too many to list, but you get the idea. Hopefully, you know that terminology. So here are 
some of the sets that you should make sure you know because you will see this notation in your textbook quite often instead of using uh, the N and Z and Q and R as I have written them it'll just be a capital and bold faced N and a capital and bold faced Z etc. So let's talk a little bit about how you might see elements in a set um, described or displayed. And there are several different notations that you might see. One of those is roster notation. And roster notation, just like the roster of a sports team, lists all of the athletes on that team. Roster notation lists all of the elements in the set, essentially in a list form. And again, we don't care about the order, so I could have put, in it, put this in a different order. But this is what a roster notation would look like, is essentially me listing everything in, this, in that set. I'm going to use that same set N, and I want to talk to you about set builder notation. Set builder notation still uses those set brackets, but then I'm going to use X, and X represents X is a value in that set, or X is an element in that set, such that, so that line means such that, and anything that comes after that such that line is essentially describing to you what characteristics X will have. So I might say that X belongs to the set of natural numbers because we know the natural numbers start with zero and then there's just the counting numbers. And then I could say, so X belongs to the set of natural numbers and X is less than or equal to five. That would certainly be one way to describe that set. I could say um, all of the X's such that X belongs to the integers and that zero is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to five. That would be another way to do it. So again, there's, it's, there's not just one right way to do it. It's just important that you understand all of the notation that might be involved in it. The last one I want to talk to you about is interval notation. And I can't use set N for that because set n is not a continuous set, meaning if I had the value 0 0.5, that's not in that set. So when we use interval notation, it means it's uh, from one number to another inclusively. So I might say, let's let set b be the numbers. So all of the x's such that 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. So I'm saying all of the numbers from 0 to 3, including 0 and including 3, because I have the or equal to. So if I were to write that in interval notation, that solution would be a closed bracket and 0 and a 3 and a closed bracket. These two things mean the same thing. That closed bracket essentially is the same as me saying or equal to. So if I said set B is the set of all X's such that 0 is less than X is less than 3, notice this is going to be very, very similar, but now I'm going to use those open brackets. And the open brackets is the same as me saying there's no or equal to here. So 0 is not included, but th and 3 is not included, but everything between 0 and 3 is included. And of course, you could get crazy and say all of the x's such that 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 3. And of course, that would be on the left side a closed bracket because 0 is included, but on the right side an open bracket because 0 is not included. So hopefully these all are familiar to you, uh, but these are the different ways you might see a set notated. There are two other special sets that I want to speak to you about before we go a little bit more involved or in depth with our set um, information that we're going to learn about in this first section of chapter two. But I want to talk to you about the universal set and the empty set. So the universal set, which of course we're just gonna use U to denote that, is essentially the set containing oops, contain ing everything under consideration. 
So anything that we're studying or looking at is going to be U. So let's just make a Venn diagram. And hopefully we've all seen a Venn diagram. And let's let the Venn diagram, we're going to let U in this case be the natural numbers. So of course the natural numbers are just the counting numbers. And I might have the set inside of the even counting numbers. Two could be in there, four is in there, six is in there, eight is in there, etc., etc., etc. That would be, uh, and we'll get into this in the next one, that would be a subset of the natural numbers, would be the even natural numbers. But notice in this Venn diagram, the things that belong to a set would be inside that circle, whereas here I'm saying that n, the natural numbers, is the universal set. The empty set is a set with no elements. So we denote that either with the, excuse me, with the zero with the line through it like this, um, or you might also see it look like this. But keep in mind that this is not the way we write an empty set because this is a set containing the empty set, which gets a little bit crazy. But these are the two ways that we might denote an empty set. So if I was looking at the universe, which is the set of natural numbers in this case, then an empty set would be the negative numbers because there are no negative natural numbers. So hopefully that kind of helps you understand. We'll get more into Venn diagrams and into different ways to denote a set uh, in our next video. Hopefully this video was a good introduction to you for some of the vocabulary and notation that we use with sets. We're going to go into more detail in the next video.